Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to cover how to install aluminum channel for LED lighting and floating shelves. We'll cover your router bit, setup, how to make the jig, and some little hints along the way to make your project come out really crisp and clean. Hope you enjoy the video. I purchased these channels from Amazon.com, very reasonably priced. They come with the channel and a diffuser, which will go across the top over the tape lighting. This set also came with some clips, but I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use some double-sided tape in my channel to hold the track in place. These particular channels were 39 inches long and my shelves were 41 inches long, which gave me an inch on both sides. So it's pretty nice. I didn't even have to actually cut down the channels. Now, in order to route this dado groove, we're going to have to make a custom jig in order to do so. And there's going to be two different options as far as router bits. Most people are going to either use a flush trim bit, so flush cutters with a flush bearing, or you can use an offset bit. So you might use a half inch bit and a 5 8 inch outside diameter guide bushing. For most beginners, I'd recommend just using a flush bit with flush bearing. But in my particular case here today, I looked in my router bit box and I didn't have a flush bit that I liked for this application. So I opted to use a half inch down cutting spiral bit and a 5 8 inch outside diameter guide bushing. There is always some slop around the screw holes on these router plates. So you want to make sure that you're centering the guide bushing around the actual bit. In a case like this, what I do is I just sight down from the top of the bit with my eyes and just center it by eye. As you center the router bit on the guide bushing, snug up your screws carefully and it should be good to go. Now that we've determined our router setup, we need to make the jig that we'll use to route this channel. For that, we're just going to simply need some scrap plywood. We'll need the actual aluminum channel so that we know the width. We'll need a 1 8 inch spacer block since we're using a guide bushing on our router instead of a flush bit. With a flush bit, you won't need this spacer block. You'll make your router jig the exact width of your channel. And then we'll need some CA glue to assemble this jig. All right, so now it's time to make our jig. Ideally to do this, you just wanna use some scrap material. If you've got some plywood laying around, it'll work just fine. The ideal situation is that the material for the jig would be flat and not have any major bows or twists in it. So plywood works pretty well for this. I happen to have a jointer in my shop. So I went ahead and just ran my pieces through the jointer to ensure that I had nice straight edges before I started assembling my jig. There are four basic parts to this jig. We're gonna have the two pieces of plywood that we just ripped, and then we're gonna need two spacer blocks. The spacer blocks are the most important part of this whole process. Since we're using an offset guide bushing, our spacer blocks need to be 1 8 of an inch wider than our actual aluminum channel to account for the offset between the router bit and our guide bushing. The most crucial part of making this jig is getting the spacer blocks the correct width. We need to take the width of our aluminum channel and add 1 8 of an inch to account for the offset between our router bit and our guide bushing. The thing is, if you make this too tight, you might have trouble getting your aluminum channel into your dado or getting it out if you need to ever take it out for any reason. So ideally you want to have a little bit of extra space so that it's easy to put in and remove that aluminum channel. In order to get the length of the slot on your jig, you wanna use the same principles. Simply put your aluminum channel in your jig, use your offset block. In this case, I actually went 3 16 to give me a little extra space, and we'll use CA glue, which is absolutely amazing for making jigs. It dries instantly, and you don't have to use any nails or fasteners or anything like that. So here what I'm doing is using my offset gauge block and trying to figure out a way to spread this apart so that I can insert this block and then with the CA glue that'll instantly set up. I'll have links to all the products I'm using in this video in the video description. These are eye gauging setup blocks. They're absolutely amazing to have around the shop. I have a couple sets and I cannot recommend them highly enough. 
Now that I've got these assembled, I'll take my sander and go ahead and just give this jig a light sanding to make sure everything is sitting flat and flush with the different pieces. Now at this point, we could stop here and just simply clamp the jig onto the floating shelf and route it out and be done with it. But since I've got six of these, I wanna go ahead and add some stops to the underside of my jig so that the jig actually self references onto the floating shelf each time I want to route a slot and I get all of these dados in the exact same place. To do this, I'll put a couple stops on the underside of the jig placed square to the reference line and just a little bit wider than what my actual floating shelf is going to be. Again, I'll go ahead and use my 2P10 CA glue to attach these blocks. Works really great for making jigs like this. And now we're finally at the last step of making this jig. We'll add one more stop to the underside of this jig, which will bump up against the back side of the floating shelf and give us our final reference point for work for whenever we clamp this down to the floating shelf. Now it's time to put our jig to work and route these dados on these floating shelves. We already have our router set up with a half inch down cut spiral bit. The down cut is important because that is going to make sure we get a really nice cut on this dado and we're not actually pulling chips up, which might lead to some tear out. A plunge router is a little bit more ideal for situations like this because it has a rod attached to the side of the router which makes it easier to set the exact depth. Since I don't have a plunge router set up right now, what I'm going to do is just take the aluminum channel and place it underneath my jig and then I can simply place my router on top of the jig, drop the bit down until it touches my floating shelf and that should be the depth that I need to route my dado. Since we've taken the time to make a really nice jig for this, the routing process is very straightforward. It's simply a matter of dropping the jig onto your floating shelf and making sure that the bump stops on the underside of your jig are fully up against the floating shelf. Then we'll simply use some clamps to clamp down the jig to the floating shelf using my Polk style workbench, which has seen better days. Again, routing is pretty straightforward for this. Uh, because I'm using a D-handle router, I'm taking the full depth of the dado in one pass uh, from a depth perspective. If I would have a plunge router, it probably would have been a little bit better to go to half depth, make a pass, and then go to full depth. It was definitely pushing this bit set up a little bit, taking quite a bit of material out at once. With this setup, I don't have any dust collection set up, so every once in a while you may have to stop and blow out the channel to get rid of all of the sawdust. Uh, that way you can ensure that your guide bushing is riding up against your jig and you're gonna get a really accurate dado. After you complete your first dado, you're gonna wanna do a test fit to make sure that you're getting the correct width on your dado before you pre proceed forward. Um, I found that I actually was getting a little bit tighter fit than what I actually wanted. If you remember earlier, I showed how there's slop in the router base with your guide bushing. One little trick that you can do if you find that you need to make your data a little bit wider is to rotate your router 180 degrees uh, after you complete the dado and hit it again with your router 180 degrees. Any minute offset between your guide bushing and the router bit then will be doubled and it'll actually make your dado a little bit wider. So that's what I did on this and I ended up coming out with a perfect dado. Go ahead and use some sandpaper to slightly round over the sharp corner. That way, if you pull out your channel, you're not gonna pull out any of that plywood grain with it. The ideal fit here is to be able to insert the aluminum channel, have a snug fit, but yet still be able to remove it whenever you need to. Because we did use a round router bit, half inch router bit to be precise, that means we're gonna be left with a quarter inch radius at the ends of our dado. Uh, we're gonna to need to square that off to make it look good with this aluminum channel. And to do that, I'm gonna use my favorite chisels, Stanley Sweetheart chisels. You can buy them off Amazon. They're really nice and sharp, and I really like working with them. The key whenever doing work like this is to have a really nice sharp chisel. That's gonna allow you to do a nice 
repairing rocking motion to get a nice clean cut as you clear out this corner with minimal pressure. Again, guys, I'll have links to these chisels in the video description. I always provide links to the tools I'm using there. Those are affiliate links, and I get a kickback from Amazon when you purchase through those links. It helps support the channel and allows me to dedicate more time to making these videos as high quality and informative as possible. Also, link there to my Amazon storefront where you'll find lists of my favorite tools. Uh, definitely check that out also. The final step in this process is for me to do my job and take care of the trades that come behind me, i.e. the electrician. So I wanna go ahead and drill some holes in the ends of this aluminum channel as well as the floating shelf so that we have a nice area in order to fish the wires for this LED tape lighting. This channel is made out of aluminum, so it's very soft and the metal is very thin, so it's pretty easy to drill through just with a standard spade bit. I opted to go ahead and drill holes on both ends of this aluminum channel and the shelves. That way I'd have maximum flexibility in deciding where I wanted to fish the wires. As you can see, these shelves turned out great. We've got the correct width of dado to where the channel fits nice and snugly, but yet loose enough that it can be removed. I'll go ahead and install these floating shelves on site without the aluminum channel in place. That way the painter can finish them first and then the electrician will come through and mount the aluminum channel using half inch double-sided tape. If you want to see more video of the installation process as well as the finished product, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Here's a little sneak peek at the installation process. Here you can see I'm fishing the wires through for the electrician. That way he'll be able to pull wire for the tape light after these are actually installed. So the painter will finish these on site. They came out great and I'm really looking forward to see the finished result. This is a nice high-end home here in Northern Indiana and this is a basement wet bar. So it's gonna be a great spot and look really nice finished up. These floating shelves are filled with PL Premium and thankfully we had the mechanical room on the back side to make it easy for the electrician to wire these babies up. Be sure to stay tuned to the channel for more videos on installation of these floating shelves and thanks again for watching.